Good morning dear students. How are you? Hope you all are fit and fine and doing your studies sincerely on regular basis. I am back with my new video of the second part of the poem of our 8th class English book Honeydew. The name of the poem as you all know is Yes, the Ant and the Cricket which is adapted from Aesop's fable. So let's start our class of today. Before starting today's class formally, students, let me take up briefly the important points of the poem which we have already discussed in the previous class. We have read about the concept of fable that is is a story with animal characters containing a moral lesson. We have seen that Aesop, a Greek storyteller, has written many interesting fables. We are also introduced to the hard-working and practical ant who has successfully saved himself against winters by preparing himself well in advance. We have met the silly cricket also, who keeps on wasting time in merrymaking and never thinks about his future. Students, let's begin with the learning objectives on which I am focusing to this class. My first and foremost objective is to make my students enjoy the poem. At the end of the class, they should be able, able to draw its moral and should be ready to apply it in their day-to-day -day life. I would like to make them learn the meaning of the new words used in the poem. They should also understand about the different poetic devices used by the poet in the poem. They should realize the far-reaching significance of the poem at the end of this class. Students, here I am having something very interesting for you. You all must know by now what is a fable, do you? Good. Here I have searched a beautiful poem describing in a rhythmic way what is a fable. Fable. Hope. It will help you in brushing your memory and to make your concept clear about what is a fable. So, let's read and enjoy. Fable A fable is a story I heard long ago. The stories are passed down from someone you know. Some fables have people, some fables have things. Some fables have lessons and can teach you how to grow. There is one thing I know that I can tell you with glee. Fables are stories that have been passed on to me. Wasn't it interesting? I hope you have found it quite amusing too. Now let's undertake an interesting activity. Students, I suppose by now you all are aware about the characteristics of the ant and the cricket. Do you? Yes, I know. So let's check it. Here, you have to choose the correct adjectives to describe the characters of the ant and the cricket. And the adjectives are foolish, practical, hardworking, Thoughtless, careless, reasonable, fun-loving, sincere, lazy and active. You have to arrange them in two columns the with the name of the ant and the cricket. Students, I believe you all are ready with your answers now. So let's match them. The adjectives which are apt for the character description of ant are practical, hard-working, 
reasonable, sincere and active. Whereas our silly cricket can be described as foolish, thoughtless, fun-loving, careless and of course lazy. Students, as I have promised to you, again I am having something very interesting for you. It is a melodious rhyme based on our poem. Just hear it and enjoy its colorful depiction and praiseworthy musical quality. Children, I hope you all have enjoyed the beautiful rhyme. Now, let's read the remaining part of the poem. So here, I am reading the last stanzas of the poem. You need to recite it with me. So, let, so let's begin. Says the ant to the cricket, I am your servant and friend. But we ants never borrow, we ants never lend. But tell me, dear cricket, did you lay nothing by? When the weather was warm, quotes the cricket, not I. My heart was so light that I sang day and night. You sang, sir, you say? Go then, says the ant, and dance the winter away. Thus ending, he hastily lifted the wicket and out of the door turned the poor little cricket. Folks call it a fable. I will warrant it true. Some crickets have four legs and some have two. Now students, I am presenting an animated video based on our poem describing all the incidents of the poem in an interesting way to you. I hope you will enjoy it. It's summer time. The sun is hot. Let's go out to play. The weather's nice. The sky is blue. It's a beautiful day. Here's a cricket in the field. He sings and jumps and plays. He sings a song all day long. He loves the summer days. There's an ant. She's very small. She's finding food to eat. She works all summer, all day long, and never has a treat. Mrs. Ant, please stop now. Don't find food today. The summer is long and we can play. Find food another day. Mr. Cricket, I can't stop now. Winter is coming soon. You must find food or you'll be hungry from October until June. Mrs. Ant, why do it now? The summer is so long. Find your food another day. But now let's sing a song. <laughs> The ant finds food. The cricket plays. And now it is September. The wind is cold. The rain is wet and soon it is December. It's cold now. 
cold with snow. The ant is in her home. She's warm and happy. She has food, and she is not alone. It's cold outside. The cricket is hungry. He has no lunch or sweet. Why did I play all summer long, and now I've nothing to eat? The ant in her house sees the cricket outside and gives him some of the food. Take that this time, but next year work hard, cricket. It's for your own good. Thank you, my friend. You saved my life. I learnt an important thing. Next summer, I'll work hard and find lots of food. Then, in the winter, we'll sing. Students. It's time to take up the new words and their usage. The word is lay nothing by, which means save nothing. Its usage is she is an extravagant girl, so lays nothing by, nothing by for her future. Next word is coat. That is an old English word which means said. Its usage is he coat. All that glitters is not gold. The next word is hastily, which means quickly. Its usage is she hastily scribble a note for her mother. The next word is folks, which means people in general. Its usage is, what do you folks think about ongoing situation? Next word is warrant, which means to assure the truth of what is said. Its usage is, I can warrant of her success in future. Children, it's time for the explanatory part of the poem along with its summary. The poor cricket reaches to the ant for help. Hearing to him, the ant answers that he considers himself to be his friend. How friend? However, the ants have a principle not to borrow anything from others, nor to lend anything to anyone. Saying this, the ant asks the cricket, why did he not gather anything when the weather was warm during spring and summer? That is, when it was the appropriate time. To this, the cricket replies that at that time he was quite happy and did not care about the future. He further says that he kept on singing day and night. He thought that the beauty of spring and summer as well as abundance of food and shelter will always remain there. He never cared about the future. Listening to this, the ant tells him to sing and enjoy in the winter also. After saying this, the ant quickly ended the conversation and pushed him out of his door. In the last two lines, the poet says that the people call it a mere fable. However, he thinks that the story is quite true and realistic. There are many crickets with four legs as well as with two. That is, there are insects like cricket 
who do not care about future and also humans who do not act according to the need of the hour thus repent later on students by this poem we learn that we ourselves are responsible for our good or bad future we must not just spend our good times ideally we must secure our future against the bad time also students the poet has used different poetic devices in order to increase the beauty of our poem the first may be taken up metaphor a metaphor is a comparison in which one thing one thing is said to be another example she is a walking dictionary it means a girl is compared to a dictionary because of her knowledge i have some more examples of metaphor also the baby is a cute button it means the baby is very cute like a button the students are busy bees the busy behavior of bees are compared to the behavior of students who must be meticulous the bird birthday boy is a happy lark lark is a singing bird so the birthday boy's happiness is compared here with a lark so now let me give you a formal definition of metaphor it is a common figure of speech that makes a comparison by directly relating one thing to another unrelated thing a poet uses a metaphor to add color and emphasis to what he is trying to express it is a comparison of two things in last line of the poem where the poet is saying that some crickets have four legs and some have two the poet compares lazy and careless people with the cricket the another poetic device used by the poet here to beautify his words is personification personification is a poetic device in which the poet gives human qualities to animals or objects for example for example the stars winked at me now winking is a human quality you all know but the poet is imagining as if a star is winking at him now the next example is the leaves danced their way through the lawn now you can see again that dancing is a human activity but here the poet is again imagining the dance done by the leaves now let me give you the formal definition of personification as a literary device personification is the projection of a characteristic that normally belong only to humans onto inanimate objects animals deities or forces of nature these characteristics can include verbs of actions that only humans do or adjectives that describe a human condition now let me take up the example from this poem says the ant to the cricket i'm your servant and friend some crickets have four legs and some have two these two examples are showing that there is personification of cricket as well as the personification of ant students i hope now you all are clear with your knowledge of the poem now let's check it through a recapitulation activity it comprises a fill up exercise so fill the blanks with the hints given in the box i'm reading the words in the words which are given in the box helping did not summer sang regretted now the sentences where you need to fill them the ant and the cricket were true friends but the ant dash 
help the cricket in need. As he dash throughout the dash and did not save anything for the future. The cricket dash and the ant taught him a lesson and not dash him. Children, I hope you all are ready with your answers to match. Let's do this. The ant and the cricket were true friends, but the ant did not help the cricket in need as he sang throughout the summer and did not save anything for the future. The cricket regretted and the ant taught him a lesson by not helping him. Children, again I am having one more exercise for you and this is match the following. I have made two columns where some information about ant and cricket is written. You have to match them together and make meaningful statements about ant and as well as the cricket. Just read them from here. There are seven statements you can see on the screen. Students, now it's time for matching the columns from A to B. You can see here it again on the screen. I'm saying it for you also. The ant was hard working and thoughtful for his future. The second statement, the ant used to live in his, live in his house comfortably. The third statement, the ant had saved for his future by working meticulously during summer. The fourth statement, the cricket was a lazy fellow who kept on wasting his time. The fifth statement, the cricket kept on singing day and night during the summer. The sixth statement, the cricket had nothing in his cupboard to eat when winter came. The cricket regretted for his careless attitude. Students, as usual, again I am having a worksheet for you that contains extract based questions. So, read the passage and answer the questions given below. My heart was so light that I sang day and night. For, for all nature looked gay. You sang, sir, you say. Go then, says the ant, and dance the winter away. So it is the extract of the poem. Now let's have the questions. First question, whose heart was light? Second question, how did the nature look to the cricket? Third question. What did the ant suggest the cricket? Fourth question. Find the word which means happy from the above lines. Students, I hope you all have written your answers. Let's match them. The cricket said that his heart was light. First answer. The second answer is the entire nature looked happy to the cricket. Third answer the ant suggested the cricket to enjoy even in the winter by dancing as he used to do during the summer. The word gay means happy. Students, you have read this poem which is adapted from Aesop's fable. Here, I am having a few more examples for you which are based on such kind of fables. You might have read the stories many a times, stories many a times. But here, 
I am presenting their poetic form. Hope you will enjoy. The first poem is The Fox and the Grapes. A thirsty fox beheld some grapes that dangled from a vine. How good, said he, they are just be for me. They look superbly fine. Time after time he leapt to reach the hanging purple fruit, but vain to try. They swung too high for his lunging jaws to loot. But after he had puffed and strained and could not touch the prize, with tail bent low he had to go, while longing filled his eyes. Oh, well, he sniffed, there is nothing lost. The grapes, I am sure, are sour. Thus, some berate the things that fate has put beyond their power. Students, can you tell me the moral of this story? This poem? Yes, it tells us that some people will discourage what they cannot achieve or have for themselves. Like the fox who was trying very hard earlier to have those grapes but later on acquired a critical outlook towards the taste of grapes which he could not have. Students, one more for you. The fox and the goat. Let's recite with me. I will tell you a story to make you all smile of a clever young fox who used all his guile to outwit a goat who was less quick, who was less quick of wit. Well, utterly stupid, you will have to admit. Foxy fell in a well and could not get out and nobody heard his loud, desperate shout. Well, he bowled and he bellowed as none can deny and was noticed at last by a goat walking by. From above he looked down at the fox in the well and could well understand how Foxy had fell. But the fox used his brain and said, Oh, I'm fine. I'm guarding the well water here. All of it, it's mine. The goat became angry and loud came his call. That water is not yours. It is there for us all. Guarding that water is for certain a sin. And blinded by anger, the goat then jumped in. The fox lapped on his back and then out of the well. And when hurrying off, the goat heard him yell. Don't always believe the thing that you are told if you want in your lifetime to live till you are old. So students, I hope you can draw out its moral. It is very much clear in the last two lines. Yes, we must not follow others' instructions blindly. We must not believe others blindly. We should apply our own logic in order to survive in this Ruth. Students, it's time for homework. The first question. The cricket says, Oh, what will become of me? When does he say it and why? Second question. Find in the poem the lines that means the same as, as neither a borrower nor a lender be. It is a famous quote given by Shakespeare. Okay, you have to find out the lines which are depicting the same. It's quite easy. Second part of the this question. What is your opinion of the ant's principle? Third question. The ant tells the cricket to dance the winter away. Do you think the word dance is appropriate here? If so, why? Fourth question. First part. Which line in the poem expressed the poet's comment? Read them out. Okay. Second part. Write the comment in your own words. Fifth question. What lesson do we learn from the poem? That's all for today's class students. Hope you have grasped all the intricacies of this poem 
and will definitely learn the important points to use them for the future. Thank you very much. See you soon with some more interesting videos. Till then, take care, stay at home and bye-bye.